Hello, you're watching the Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Israeli forces attack Al-Aqsa Mosque, injuring 150. Palestine action targets Elbit systems in Leicester. Vetsuetan protesters condemn harassment in Canada. And Mexicans rally in favor of energy reform. In our first story, Scores of Israeli security forces stormed Al-Aqsa Mosque compound in occupied East Jerusalem when thousands of worshippers were performing morning prayers during the month of Ramadan on Friday, April 15. The video footage of the attack circulating on social media show Israeli forces carried out large-scale violence against Palestinians. There were a large number of women and children among the worshippers when occupation forces entered the compound from the Moroccan gate fighting firing at them with rubber bullets, stun grenades and tear gas without any provocation and warning. Palestinian youth deployed at the venue to guard the worshippers retaliated with stone swelting. More than 150 people were injured in the attacks according to the Palestinian Red Crescent which also claimed that it treated dozens others at the site despite Israeli forces preventing them from doing so. The occupation forces also prevented ambulances from reaching the venue. According to the Times of Israel, security forces denied they entered the mosque compound. Instead, they claimed that Palestinians inside burst firecrackers and hurled stones at them. However, in the video footage shared by a number of Palestinian Israeli forces were seen attacking the worshippers. The video also shows Israeli security forces capturing some Palestinians and pinning them down on the floor with their hands tied behind their backs. At least 400 Palestinians were arrested during the raids. Israeli security forces were also seen attacking media persons inside the mosque compound when they were trying to cover the attack. Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas called the increased Israeli violence on Palestinians unbearable and asked for immediate international intervention to end the occupation. Hamas also issued a statement claiming that entire Palestinian people are behind those who are struggling against the occupation in East Jerusalem. Continuing with Palestinian resistance, activists from the Palestine Action Group on April 14th successfully blocked the functioning of the arms manufacturer's Elbit Systems UAV Tactical Systems Factory in Leicester. This comes days after the group held a similar action at the London headquarters of the company. The direct action yesterday saw two activists attaching themselves to the factory gates by fixing themselves to a body lock-on, resulting in the site becoming inaccessible to employees and halting production. The two activists reportedly carried with them placards with red Free Palestine besides also pouring red paint symbolizing blood on the ground in front of the factory gates as part of their direct action. They were subsequently arrested by the police as was another woman activist who was carrying placards. Palestine Action described the police response against them disproportionate. The police later confirmed that the third activist was de-arrested while the other two were released in the evening. The group states that UAV Tactical Systems, an Elbit Systems subsidiary, is a leading manufacturer of Israeli military drones used extensively by the Israeli military to kill and carry out surveillance operations against Palestinians in the occupied Palestinian territories of West Bank, East Jerusalem and Gaza. The Hermes drone, manufactured at the Leicester factory, is just among the many deadly advanced drones by Elbit Systems that are supplied to the Israeli military. Palestine Action noted that the Israeli military sources 85% of its drones from Elbit. According to the group, the Hermes 450 drone was used widely in Israeli invasions of Gaza in 2014 and 2021. All of its drones are reportedly battle-tested on Palestinians under Israeli occupation, a fact that the company touts while advertising and offering its drones to foreign customers at weapons expos and other military sale events. Palestine Action has vowed to increase the number and intensity of its direct actions against the company across the United Kingdom. As the indigenous anti-pipeline resistance against the coastal gas link or CGL continues in Wet'suwet'en lands in Canada, protesters have called out the repeated police intimidation in their lands. 
According to the Giddington checkpoint, one of the groups organizing the resistance, since March, the Royal Mounted Canadian Police or the RCMP have been making daily visits to village sites in the lands. The RCMP visits are made anywhere between four to eight times a day to intimidate and harass leaders, activists and supporters, said the group. Protesters have claimed that the lands have been under surveillance round the clock since January when protesters had to make a strategic retreat from a major occupation site on the pipeline drill site to avoid further arrests and legal harassment. Activists have also accused the police of interrupting Wet'suwet'en rituals due to these unwarranted visits. The RCMP has in the past employed heavy-handed tactics to break apart sit-ins and demonstrations near the CGL pipeline drill site. The harassment comes at a time when pipeline resistors have taken to expand their movement outside the Wet'suwet'en lands and pressure investors of the controversial pipeline project. Last week, on April 7, a delegation of hereditary chiefs of Wet'suwet'en were scheduled to attend the shareholders' meet of the Royal Bank of Canada, or RBC, one of the main investors in the pipeline project. The RBC had cancelled the in-person meeting due to a COVID outbreak, which activists argued was an excuse to scuttle possibilities of uncomfortable questions from the indigenous group. RBC had earlier scuttled a major proposal on financing of fossil fuel projects from being considered in the shareholders' meeting prior to the meeting. Wet'suwet'en activists have nevertheless refused to back down and continue to attract nationwide solidarity and attention. And finally, on April 12th, hundreds of citizens took to the streets in different parts of Mexico in support of the electricity reform promoted by President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, or AMLO. In the capital, Mexico City, members of various civil society organizations, social movements and trade unions held a march from the Zocalo to the Chamber of Deputies. They demonstrated outside the Legislative Palace of San Lazaro, calling on the legislators of the opposition parties to approve the reform to the Electricity Industry Law, or LIE, which allows nationalization of the energy industry. The protesters chanted anti-privatization slogans. Demonstrations in favor of the reform also took place in the cities of San Luis Potosi and Queretaro. The call for the mobilization was given by the National Front in defense of the electricity reform. This is a platform that brings together over a hundred social organizations, trade unions and progressive political parties which advocate that the reform will help in the recovery of country's energy sovereignty. The discussion and vote on the electricity reform in the lower house of the Congress was scheduled for April 12th. However, it was postponed to next Sunday, April 17, at the request of the ruling center-left National Regeneration Movement, or Morena, and its allies. This was with the purpose of achieving greater socialization about the content of the reform so that the public is fully aware of it. The electricity reform presented by President AMLO seeks to roll back the op opening of the energy industry to foreign and private investment by the far-right government of former President Enrique Peña Nieto in 2013. The reform proposes to change electricity dispatch rules to favor state-owned entity Federal Commission, Federal Electricity Commission, I'm sorry, or the CFE over private renewables. It seeks to limit private investment in the energy market and strengthen the state companies. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Thank you.